So thank you for spending your time with me um, today. And uh, what we're going to do, um, I'm about to start sharing the screen. And we're going to go and take a deep dive into the deep, dark, mysterious lower astral realm. So if you'll just bear with me here. Let us do that. Okay, so I will ask when I am doing the share screen. I cannot see any of the chat messages, so I will be pausing at relevant points and catching up with the chat. What I'm going to be doing is I am going to be muting everybody so I can get through the stuff I need to get through before I open up for the first stage of when people have got any questions or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to start. Oh, hang on. Uh, uh, I am going to start. I promise I am. <laughs> uh, oh, am I? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, good. How do I get rid of that? That would be on you. Sorry, technical difficulties here. Uh... Nope, wrong one. Let's just go ahead and leave it. Okay. There we go. Oh. Um, okay, so as I say, we're going to take a uh, a journey into the uh, depths, exploring the lower astral realm. All right, so here's uh, just a brief outline of what we're going to be going through. Uh, my introduction, myths and misconceptions about the lower astral realm, benefits of visiting the lower astral realm, a different perspective of the astral, uh, the lower astral realm, methods of protection for astral travelers, exploring the lower astral realm, encountering entities in the lower astral realm, returning from the lower astral realm, the importance of self-care after astral travel. Shall we begin? <laughs> Common pitfalls of astral travel, conclusions, embracing the lower astral realm. And then at the end, we'll have a, a, a big old uh, questions and answers and a little bit of a conversation. So, introduction into the lower astral realm. Welcome to the world of astral travel, where we can explore the vast and mysterious realms beyond our physical reality. Today, we'll be delving into one such realm, the lower astral realm. The lower astral realm is a place of intense energy and emotion, where our deepest fears and desires manifest as vivid experiences. It is a realm that holds great significance in the world of astral travel as it offers us a unique opportunity for self-discovery and spiritual growth. Myths and misconceptions about the lower astral realm. One of the most common misconceptions about the lower astral realm 
that it is a dangerous and negative place. While there may be some entities or energies that can be challenging to navigate, the lower astral realm is not inherently negative. In fact, it can be a place of great growth and self-discovery. Another myth about the lower astral realm, that it is only accessible to experienced astral travelers. While it is true that some level of experience and preparation can be helpful, anyone with an interest in exploring this realm can do so with proper guidance and techniques. What are the benefits of visiting the lower astral realm? Now, I know a lot of people didn't expect to see benefits, but there are quite a lot of them. So visiting the lower astral realm can be a trans transformative experience that opens up new avenues of spiritual growth and self-discovery. By exploring this realm, you can gain a deeper understanding of your soul and your place in the universe. Through encounters with different entities and experiences, you may also gain insights into your own psyche and the workings of the world around you. The lower astral realm offers a unique opportunity to expand your consciousness and explore new dimensions of existence. Now, here's where I want to talk about things from a different perspective. You'll see here I, I have Two columns. One directly reflects the other. So, we look at number one, earthly and mundane energies. The lower astral realm is often associated with energies that are more connected to the physical world. This includes thoughts, emotions, and energies related to everyday life, desires, and mundane concerns. It is a realm where earthly experiences and attachments are prominent. So this is where I, I talk about things that could be negative. Are you having a bad day? What mundane things are on your mind? But the alternative or the different perspective of looking at that is self-reflection. Many individuals use the lower astral realms as a space for self-reflection and introspection. It's a place to gain a deeper insight into one's emotions, behaviors, and past experiences. Now, sometimes in the lower astral realm, you'll see symbolic imagery. So you'll see images or pictures that are very symbolic. So often when you're in the lower astral realm, individuals will often encounter symbolic imagery. These symbols can represent a personal, a collective archetype themes and may offer insight into one's subconscious mind or the alternative way of looking at it is symbolic exploration the symbolic imagery encountered in the lower astral realm can be decoded for personal and spiritual meaning this can lead to a better understanding of one's subconscious mind so could be negative but if you turn it around it can most certainly be a positive elemental beings some believe that elemental beings of nature spirits such as ghosts undying sliffs and salamanders are more accessible in the lower astral realm these beings are thought to be closely connected to the natural world. 
that's one way of looking at it. But from a different perspective, I look at it as a nature connection. So for those of you that are interested in nature spirituality, the lower astral realm can be a place to connect with the elemental beings and deepen the relationship with the natural world. Past memories and emotion. Now, this is an important one. The lower astral realm may contain memories, emotions, and experiences from one's past or even past lives. It can be a space for processing unresolved emotions and experiences. Looking at it from a different point of view, you have self-reflection. Many individuals use the lower astral realm as a space for self-reflection and introspection. It's a place to gain deeper insight into one's emotions, behaviors, and past experiences. It's a place of opportunity and learning and growth. While the lower astral realm is associated with more earthly energies, it can also provide opportunities for personal growth, self-reflection, and learning. It is a place where individuals can confront their inner struggles and challenges. Or, if you look at it from an alternative view, that's emotional healing. Unresolved emotions and past traumas can be explored and healed in the lower astral realm. It offers an opportunity to confront and release emotional baggage. <clears throat> now, the lower astral realm is also a great place to access, to have access to information. Some practitioners of astral projection and meditation believe that the lower astral realm can provide access to inform information, insights, and knowledge that may not be readily available in the physical world. It is a realm where hidden truths can be revealed. So, it's about information retrieval. Seekers of esoteric knowledge may explore the lower astral realm to access hidden wisdom, ancient teachings, or insight into metaphysical concepts. So that's looking at the lower astral realm, but looking at it in a completely different perspective. Now, when we go into the lower astral realm, there are some things that are going to help you. Because of the stigma that's been attached to the lower astral realm and how it's a deep, dark, nasty, scary place where boogeymen and ghosties and goblins and things lurk. It can be a daunting task, but with the right techniques, it can also be an incredibly rewarding experience. One of the most important things to remember, stay grounded, stay centered. This means focusing on your breath and keeping your attention in the present moment. <clears throat> it can also be helpful to visualize a protective shield around you. Another technique for navigating the lower astral realm is to set a clear intentions before you begin your journey. This can help you stay focused and avoid getting lost or distracted. It's also important to trust your intuition, follow your instincts. If something doesn't feel right, don't be afraid to change course <coughs> and seek guidance from your spiritual guides. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. When embarking on an astral journey, it is important to take precautions to ensure your safety and well-being. One effective method of projection is visualization. Before beginning your journey, visualize yourself 
but surrounded by a protective bubble of light. This bubble will shield you from any negative energies or entities you may encounter in the lower astral realm. Another helpful technique is to call upon your spiritual guides for protection. These guides can take many forms, such as angels or spirit animals. Simply asking them to accompany you on your journey and protect you from harm, trust that they will be at your side every step of the way. So as we've gone through these slides, you can see that there are many, many different possibilities in the lower astral realm. There's esoteric knowledge. There's knowledge about yourself. There's a way to develop, almost do shadow work, for want of a better word, in the lower astral realm. It will allow you to confront things in a safe way, which is always extremely important to me. Um, the boundaries of reality can get blurred and anything is possible. It's a place where you can explore new dimensions of yourself and discover hidden truths about your inner being. The key to exploring this realm is to approach it with an open mind and a sense of adventure. One tip for making the most of your experience in the lower astral realm is to set specific intentions before you begin your journey. What do you want to learn or discover? What questions do you have about yourself or the world around you? By setting clear intentions, you can focus your energy and attention on what truly matters to you and make the most of your time in this magical realm. So, I'm going to stop sharing just there. If you looked in the class um, chat, I did tell everybody to make sure they had a pen and a piece of paper. So, what I want everybody in the class to do is to have two pieces of paper in front of them and a pen. Now, if you don't have these, I'm going to give everybody just a couple of minutes just to go ahead and grab these. Okay, so go ahead, grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper. Now, it needs to be something you can physically fold. So if you're using a notebook, you'll need to tear out a page. But you're going to need two pieces of paper to write things on. That's really important. So I'll give you guys just a couple of minutes uh, just to go grab them if you need to. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back to class. So everybody go get their supplies. Or if you already have them, get ready to do some writing. And we'll take it from there.
Yes, it is class number four. And Kelsey, you're absolutely right. It is an alternative method to accessing uh, the ASIC record. All right, so can everybody give me a thumbs up, a yes, a holler, just to make sure we've got everybody back and they have a pen and a piece of paper. Yep, yep. Good, 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 good. Superb. Okay, so there were two things we've just gone over. Um, One of them was intention setting. So this this is what we're going to do right now. Now, does everybody here have experience with intention and how to write out intention? Okay. I'm actually glad somebody said no. <laughs> All right, so when you're writing out intention, what you're going to do is you are going to write a sentence. But because it is an intention, you are going to word it in such a way So here's what I want everybody to write. On one of the pieces of paper that you have, what I want you to write is I want you to write, I am centered, grounded, and protected. So I'll go ahead and write that into the chat. Centered. Grounded and protected. So on your piece of paper, I want you to write, I am centered, grounded, and protected. Then what I want you to do is I want you to write that again underneath. I am centered, grounded, and protected. But what I want you to do is as you're writing it, I want you to think about each word and what it means to you. And then we're going to write it a third time. I am centered, grounded, and protected. But this time, I want you to put a lot of thought into each letter and each word as you write it. So, I am centered, grounded, and protected. 
So what you're doing is you're putting your intention into the word. So centered, grounded, protected. I am centered. I am grounded. I am protected. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take that piece of paper and fold it a few times so you can fit it into the palm of your hand. So if you're using a small note, post-it note, maybe just a couple of times. If you're using a whole sheet of paper, you may have to fold it a few more times. Okay, and I want you to leave that folded piece of paper in front of you. Then, what I want everybody to do is I want everybody to write out what they hope to get from this experience. So, again... What are you looking to learn? Are you looking to learn? Are you looking to discover something about yourself? Are you looking to discover so about something about the world around you? Are you looking for enlightenment? Are you looking for knowledge? And again, what I want you to do is I want you to frame it as an I am. So I am seeking knowledge. I am looking for information i am looking to discover new things whatever you're wanting to get out of this experience in the lower realm write out as an i am statement yep kelsey on on the uh on the other page, yep. All right. I assume everybody has done that. Okay, no problem, Michelle. Oh, you knew where I was going with that one, Rebecca. Yep. What we're going to do is, as Rebecca said in the chat, I want you to write that out three times in total. Okay? That's why I said keep it short and sweet. You don't want to be having to write out 15, uh, three paragraphs. <laughs>
And again, you're going to do exactly the same thing as you did last time. You're going to fold this piece of paper up so you can fit it in the palm of your hand type thing. All right, everybody give me a thumbs up or a yes or a good to go or some indication that everybody's good. All right, Kiki's good. Kelsey's good. Andrea, honey. Tom's good. Love it, love it, love it. Danny is good, superb. Ashley's done, and Michelle's done. Okay, superb. Thanks, everybody. It looks like we're ready to go. All right, this first piece, that first piece of paper that you wrote, I am going to ask you to do something really strange. What I want you to do is I want you to place that piece of paper either underneath your foot or underneath your leg or sit on it, but I need it to be on the right-hand side of your body. So the, I am, so the I am gra uh, centered, grounded, and protective. I want you to either put it underneath your right foot, or put it underneath your right leg. Or even sit on it, but make sure it's on the right hand side. And then with the second piece of paper, what I want you to do with that is I want you to put that into your left hand and I just want you to hold it. Okay, so we have the I am grounded, centered, and protected on your right hand side. And on your left hand side, we have what you're looking to get out of this experience. Andrea, absolutely. Of course we can. Of course we can. So... All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let everybody Take a few deep breaths and just just chill for a few minutes. And what we're going to do is we're just going to think about what we wrote and what we have in our left hand.
what did you write about what you want from this trip? So, on your right hand side, you have I am grounded, centered, and protected. And on your left hand side, you have in your hand what you want to get from this experience. And I just want you to think a little bit just about what you want to get out of this experience. Okay, so you're in effect that on, stood on, have underneath you, on your right hand side, you have, I am centered, grounded, and protected. On your left hand side, you have what you want to get out of this. Now, the reason I've had you do this is twofold. One is about projection, and the other is about receiving. Now, the way the energy flows around your body, your right-hand side is typically your projection side, and your left-hand side is your receiving side. So, what you are projecting out is, I am centered, grounded, and protected. What you are receiving is what you have in your other hand. Okay, so, while encountering entities in the lower astral realm, it's possible you may encounter various entities. These can range from benevolent beings to malevolent ones. It is important to remember that these entities are not physical and they cannot harm you physically. However, they can have an impact on your energy and or emotions. If you encounter an entity, remain calm and centered. You can protect yourself by visualizing a shield of white light around you or calling upon your spiritual guides for assistance. Nothing here can harm you unless you allow it. You are protected, grounded, and free of fear. So, on the return from the lower astral realm, it can be a jarring experience. So, as you re-enter the physical, it's important to take some time to ground yourself and adjust to your surroundings. Take deep breaths and focus on your physical senses, what you can see, what you can hear, what you can taste, what you can touch, what you can feel. So you're going to use your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, and your, your tongue. <laughs> you're going to use those, those senses, okay? 
Uh, focus on the physical senses, such as the feeling of the ground beneath your feet or the sound of birds outside. This will help you reorientate yourself and integrate your experience back to daily life. It is also important to reflect on your journey and what you learned during your time in the lower astral realm. What insights did you gain? What emotions did you experience? Take some time to journal about your experience and process any feelings that may have come up. This will help you fully integrate your experiences and apply any lessons learned to your life. Now, as you know, I'm a firm believer in keeping things safe and keeping things as, as safe as possible and as secure as possible, which is why self-care is important after astral travel. After a journey in the lower astral realm, it is important to take care of yourself. Rest is crucial for in integrating the experience into your daily life. Take the time to reflect on what you've learned and how you can apply it to your spiritual growth. Grounding techniques can also be helpful after astral travel. These can include activities like walking barefoot in nature, meditating, or doing yoga. Find what works best for you and make it a part of your self-care routine. So, now we're at this point. I've explained to you why you've written down what you've written down. What you're doing is you're setting intentions. And you've also set down on a separate piece of paper what you're looking to gain from this experience. And if you remember... This is a learning experience, okay? I want everybody to understand that you are safe, you are grounded, you are centered, and you are protected. Now, I don't know what anybody has written as to what they are wanting to get from this. And it's important that I don't. That is important to you and to you alone at this time. When we talk about malevolent beings, this could come across as images. This could come across as symbology. Okay. What I want you to remember, and this is why I stressed about practicing doing, having some kind of shielding, be that in the case of one, one person here, using animals to protect you. <coughs> so that would be almost a spirit animal. So spirit guides, that kind of thing. I know some people have a really hard time with visualizing energy or some people even struggle with feeling energy and that's perfectly fine what i want you to do is i just want you to relax one of the most important things is being self-aware and being relaxed Now, with that in mind, if anybody does not want to participate in this next bit, which is where we're actually going to go into the lower astral realm, if anybody feels uncomfortable, they're welcome to mute their speakers, turn off their speakers, 
if you're wearing headphones, take out your headphones. I am not going to force anybody to do this. If you're hesitant about doing this, I would say try looking at things from an alternative point of view. Could you see things from your past or even a past life? Yes, you could. But then you have to ask yourself, why are you seeing this? Just as um, Kelsey had said in, in her class, you know, uh, about being helped with shadow work and being prodded and pointed in the di right direction. Is this a way for you to learn and grow from something in a past life? Something that maybe you weren't aware of right now. Okay, but everybody here is safe, centered, grounded, and protected. With that in mind, I'm going to give you a few seconds to make the choice whether you want to go ahead or not. Again, I'm not forcing anybody to do this. What I've tried to do is I've tried to show you that yes, there is a lot of negativity about astral travel especially when it comes to the lower realms people want to make it out to be this deep dark nasty scary place as i've explained the energy there is heavy things you can see there can be eye-opening now some people take that eye-opening as confrontational or hostile but the key thing you have to remember is on your right hand side you are projecting that you are grounded you are centered and you are protected what you're looking for is what you have in your left hand. That is what you are looking to gain from this experience. So, Andrea, I, I perfectly understand. As I say, I'm not going to force anybody. Um, I will put a note in the chat so if you do want to hang around but just mute us so you can't hear us I perfectly understand and what I will do is I will post something on the chat when we're done just so you have an indication that the meditation is over and everything is good alright sounds great okay so what I want everybody to do is I want everybody just to take a moment, get in a comfy position, and we're going to close our eyes, and we're going to take a few deep breaths. Slowly, as you start to breathe in, you're going to feel relaxed. As you breathe out, you're going to get rid of fear and anxiety. As you breathe in, I want you to remember these words. 
I am grounded. I am centered. I am protected. Now with your eyes closed, if you see any kind of coloring or anything like that, just let it roll. And this time, as you take a deep breath in, on your exhale, you can imagine yourself slowly walking down a crowded city street. You can feel the traffic. You can hear the hustle and bustle of people going about their daily life. As you're walking down the street, looking around, you can see the buildings, you can see what other people are wearing. You can hear the traffic, maybe an ambulance going by or a fire truck or a police truck. It's your average city. And you're just walking down the street. As you walk down the street, you're going to come to a corner. And what you're going to do, you're going to turn around this corner. I still want you to remember those three words. Grounded, centered, and protected. Now, as you turn this build, uh, the, this corner, you'll see there's one big building that takes up the whole street. And you'll notice that there's no traffic, but there are people coming backwards and forwards, and walking into shops, but you're going to focus on the big building that's in front of you. It has an amazing archway. It has wooden doors that are open. And it has a set of steps that go up into it. And what we're going to do together is we're going to go and we're going to walk up those steps. For those of you that don't want to use the steps, there's a slope on the left and the right. And you're going to take another big deep breath as you walk inside this big hall. And you're going to look around and you're going to see arch windows at the top. And you're going to see big pillars on the left and on the right. But in front of you, you're going to recognize a big clock. Big, big clock. The biggest clock you've ever seen. And you can see the clock face. What you're going to do, you're going to look up at this big clock face. And you're going to notice that instead of going tick-tock, 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 the clock itself is going top tick, top tick, top tick, top tick, top tick, top tick. But you'll notice this top ticking is a slow top tick, top tick. And you'll notice the more you stare at this clock, as you breathe in and out, you'll notice that it's going tock tick, tock tick, 
in time with your breath, it will start to slow down as your breath starts to slow down. And you'll look at this clock in sheer amazement at the size of it and the fact that all you can hear is tock tick. Tock. The sound of the hustle and bustle outside has disappeared and all you can hear is tock. Now you'll notice underneath the clock there is a big mirror. And what you're going to do is you're going to approach this mirror. And you can still hear the top tick, top tick of the clock as you stare at the mirror and you'll notice you can see yourself in the mirror but you can't see anything else in the mirror just yourself you can see your own reflection and you lean forward to take a closer look at that reflection and as you lean forward, you'll notice that the mirror starts to get misty. Starts to get foggy. Almost like the snow falling. Almost like the snow falling. It's misty, it's foggy, yet you can still see yourself in the mirror. And you can still hear the tock, tick, tock, tick. And it's matching your breathing. And as you look at your reflection, you get curious. And you use your right hand. And you place it on the mirror. But instead of feeling a glass surface, you feel like a watery surface. Almost like it's jello. And you can hear the tock, tick, tock, tick. You can see your own reflection. But then you notice you're pushing your hand further and further into the mirror. And you notice that in your left hand you have a piece of paper. A piece of paper that you wrote what you wanted to get on the lower astral realm. And what you're going to do now is you're going to see something really crazy. You're going to walk through the mirror. Now, as you walk through the, mir the mirror, you'll feel that little damp sensation like you're walking underneath a waterfall. You'll just feel that quick trickle as it goes through your body and you'll notice you're stood in a big hallway a long hallway and what you're going to do now is you're going to repeat in your head I am grounded I am centered and I am protected. And as you say these words, you'll notice a door 
and this door is opening for you. This door is opening for you. And you slowly start to walk down the corridor towards this door. And as you're walking down this corridor, you notice it's cool. You can feel the marble floor that's on the floor. And you notice that as you walk, instead of hearing tock tick of the clock, what you're actually hearing is tick-tock of the clock. It's doing its normal thing. And you're going to remember what you have on your right-hand side. You're going to remember that I am centred, grounded and protected. What you're going to do is you're going to walk through the door. And as you walk through that door, you're going to notice a meadow. And it's going to look like summertime. It'll be wild flowers, butterflies. But you'll notice just off to the distance, there's a seat. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment. And then I want you to go sit on that seat. Then what I want you to do is the piece of paper that you have held in your left hand this entire time. You know what you wrote on that paper. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a few deep breaths and I want you to verbalize and say aloud what it is that you wrote down. But I want you to do this in your mind. So the first time you say it, you're going to notice that the tick-tock of the clock stops. The second time you say it, you're going to see a picture frame. A picture frame that's going to come and float in front of you. The third time you say it, you're going to notice something appearing in that picture frame. Now, it may be an animal. Maybe a scenery, it may be words, or it may be images, maybe a video clip. What I want you to do is, I want you to spend a couple of minutes just looking at the picture frame and seeing what appears in the picture frame for you. If you need to, Go over what you wrote down. Each time images, things may appear. It may be people, it may be noises, it could be sounds, it could be images, it could be anything. But if you start to feel nervous, 
I want you to repeat aloud in your head. I am centered. I am grounded. I am protected. No harm will come. You start to feel nervous or start to feel afraid. Remember, you are centered, you are grounded, you are protected, and no harm will come. Spend a minute looking into the frame. What does the frame show you? What is the picture frame revealing for you? You are centered, you are protected, you are grounded, no harm will come. Look at the picture frame. Memorize what it's showing you. Is it showing you color, symbol, images? Is it playing a movie? Is it opening a book? You are calm, you are centered, you are grounded, and no harm will come. Think about what you wrote. What did you want to gain from this experience? What is the picture frame showing you? What is it revealing to you? How do you feel? What do you feel? You are calm, you are centered, you are protected, no harm will come.
slowly in the distance. You're going to notice there is a tick. And you'll notice that as that noise slowly starts to get louder, the images and what you're seeing in that picture frame are slowly going to start drifting away. you hear that noise getting louder and louder those images those pictures those sounds those smells those tastes and what you're feeling will get less and less and as you look closer at the picture frame you'll notice but the picture frame is getting bigger and bigger. You'll notice that the picture frame is turning from a picture frame into a mirror. What you're going to do is you're going to step up from your chair and you're going to walk towards this mirror. You're going to walk through the mirror just like you did last time. And you'll find yourself back in that corridor. You can feel the warmth of the glen and the meadow behind you. And you'll walk slowly down the hallway. And you'll notice as you walk down the hallway, every step you take, you'll hear pock, tick, tock. Tick. What you're going to do is you're going to put your right hand out in front of you. And you're going to walk back through the mirror again. And you're going to notice that you're back in the hallway. You're going to notice that this time the tock tick has turned back into a tick tock. And you can see the doorway of the grand hall. You're going to walk towards the doorway. But as you do, you're going to notice there's a little girl. This little girl has an envelope. And she hands it to you as you walk past her. And as you go down the steps, back into the street. You're going to walk down the steps. And the sound of the tick-tock is going to fade the sound of the bustling street is going to return. And you're going to open the envelope that you're now looking at.
And you're going to find a folded piece of paper with a message that's been written just for you. As you read the message, you take in the message. You're going to take a big, deep breath in. And as you breathe in, you're going to breathe back out. And the image of the street, and the image of the message, and of the girl with the ambulance, slowly going to drift away. You slowly drift away. And you're going to return to where you are. Back in the moment. Back in the here and now. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment. Take a few deep breaths. And when you're ready, I want you to open your eyes. Welcome back, guys. I want you to take a minute. I want you to get aware of your surroundings and where you are. I want you to look around. Remember, you're sat there in front of your phone, in front of your laptop, in front of your monitor. Just take a minute. Take a couple of deep breaths. And relax. Congratulations, guys. And girls. Ladles and jelly spoons. You just took a trip to the lower astral realm. And it wasn't scary. It wasn't frightening. You were centered. You were grounded. And you were protected the whole entire time. Take a minute, get yourself aware of where you are, if you need to take a drink of water, go ahead and take a drink of water, All right. Guys, you did amazing. You did absolutely amazing. Now, that message... Is something that is very, very personal to you. That is a message that is meant solely for you. The message you are handed in the envelope is important to one person and one person only. That is you. So... <laughs> Does anybody want to talk about what they just experienced? I'm not going to force anybody to. And I will make one thing clear. I do not want to know the message in the envelope that is personal to you and you alone. But does anybody want to take a moment? And just discuss what happened.
What did you feel? What did you see? Um, there was an imagery that I saw that I'm curious what it means. It was, it looked like a family crest of and a red bird that was like a raven mm -hmm. on a crown, like sitting on a crown. Okay. I'm curious what that means. Um, I couldn't read my envelope, which was disappointing. But okay. That, 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 that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Imagery seems like it must mean something, but I'm not sure what. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see who we've got. Honey Sun. Um, the, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, it was really fun and really easy to imagine. Um, when, when we got to depart with the lobby with the mm -hmm. giant clock, for some reason, right after you, uh, imagine when right after you walk in, there's like marble columns on both sides, and then closer up by the front, mm -hmm. there's two more. On the first one to the right, I had an odd fascination with. I went over, touched it, I kept looking back at it. I have no idea why. Okay. <laughs> Can you um, remember whether it was on the left or the right? From when you first walk in, it's on the right. Okay. Um. After that, when we went to the through the mirror to like the meadow, and when we sat down, mm -hmm. when I sat down, the meadow disappeared and went to like this small room, not not like small small, but you know, average small size, mm -hmm. and it was like a room with a bunch of picture frames in it, a couple clocks, but they were all kind of strewn about there were some were hanging lopsided on the wall some were on the floor busted some were intact on the floor just kind of all over the place and the picture frame was just kind of like hovering in front of me uh -huh. when i was looking at can we say what we saw in the picture frame or was that yeah oh yeah personal, absolutely like the... absolutely okay. if you're happy to share that i would be more than interested in hearing what you guys saw mm -hmm. Um, so in the picture frame, at first I got nothing. It was just like white. The picture frame itself was kind of, uh, I don't want to say ornate, but swirly and viney, kind of. Mm -hmm. It was kind of golden and, but, but old gold, if that makes sense. Yep. Uh, and then after a while of the just white on it, it turned to like this soft blue. And then it showed me a picture of my bed with my rainbow llama at the foot. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then it, then that was there for a minute. And then it showed me like the color coral, like a, like a soft pink orange coral. Mm -hmm. And then that was the end of that. And when we went back to, went back, got up from the bench, went back to the meadow, walked through the mirror. And then as I was walking out of the building towards the girl, I was looking at the column again. I have no idea what's with my fascination with that column. I want to go back and investigate it more. <laughs> and the oh. uh, envelope, okay, not going to talk about that, but it was just odd. Because it was just one thing, and I don't even know a lot about what it was. It was just like a symbol. Okay. Okay. What I would recommend you do is I would recommend you make a note of that symbol. Okay. I would recommend 
if anybody saw any kind of symbol, you make a note of them. In fact, I think it would be beneficial for everybody just to do a little bit of writing in their own time over the next couple of days about what exactly they saw, what exactly they felt. But let me ask you this, honey son. Was it a deep, dark, and scary place? No, not at all. It was... The street was quite lovely, li lively, and everywhere else was just pretty calm, just really chill. Oh. Okay, one last question. Would mm -hmm. you go there again? Definitely. Good. Superb. And I like so much about what you described about being on the floor, about the clocks that were weird and broken and some were broken, some weren't broken, some were handling at a skinny angle. That's really, really interesting and really cool. Okay. Also the lobby, uh I forgot to say. Well with the giant clock, it kinda reminded me of Grand Central Station a little bit, but with a lot less people. Like a lot, like none. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So uh, Kelsey has put in the chat uh corridors lined up with obsidian. Interesting. Okay, she said the floor was shimmery. Top tick was mesmerizing. Don't talk about the game. Okay. That's perfectly fine. And if you do want to talk about that separately, um, Kelsey, um, I'd, I'd be quite happy to do that um so if you do want to reach out that's perfectly fine okay superb anybody else want to talk about uh about what they experienced either in the meadow or in the hall or in the city street I spent the time uh, pulling out some bills that I need to photocopy and send out tomorrow. So this was a good for, thing for me. Superb. Uh, and to answer your question, Andrea, no, we will not. You won't be using um, the same phrases and the same words um, in all of the astral realms. Uh, this one was particularly set up and the way I did it and this whole meditation was set up distinctly with those things in mind. However, the I am grounded, I am centered, I am protected. You can certainly use that within your as part of your practice anyway, simply because it's a way of you projecting your intention out to the universe. So, That's great. You know, it, it is something, even, even though you, you didn't participate in the meditation, you've still gained something from here, um, from the lesson in the fact that you are you now have a different way of projecting things, setting intentions and projecting them out into the universe. So you've definitely learned something, and I'm so happy that you were here. Yes, thank you very much. No problem. 
anybody else. This will be in chat. Uh, I don't know how to explain my it's more nervous with the crowd to streets. That's normal for me. Okay. The lobby was marble and had a black and red door. And the series of faces back there. Right at the end, it faded into a medium blue, but no picture. Interesting. Ashley, um, did the little girl give you a message at all? I'd be really curious to read about that. Okay, anybody else want to jump in real quick before we carry on? No? Okie okay, dokie. That's okay. So, one of the things I do want to discuss um, with you guys is pitfalls within astral work. One of the most common pitfalls of astral travel is becoming too attached to the experience. This is especially prevalent in the bridge, the lower, and the higher realm. Um, while exploring the lower astral realm can be some source of spiritual growth and self-discovery, it is important to remember that it's just one aspect of our existence. Becoming too focused on the astral realm can lead to neglect in our physical reality and responsibility. It's important to maintain a balance between our astral and physical selves. Another common pitfall is neglecting physical reality altogether. While astral travel can be an amazing experience, it is important to remember that we still have a physical body to take care of. Neglecting our physical health and responsibilities can lead to negative consequences in both realms. It's important to prioritize self-care and balance between our astral and our physical selves. So this is where the self-care comes in. This is where the self-care is important. Oh, I see I have a chat message. Do you see a link to astral travel in the issue with uh, disassociating often. Okay. Um, I'll answer that at the end. Uh, but that, that's definitely one thing I, I do want to cover. Um, so, in conclusion, embracing the lower astral realm. We've explored the lower astral realm and its significance in astral travel. We have discussed the benefits of visiting this realm for spiritual growth and self-discovery dispelled common myths and misconceptions, providing guidance on how to navigate and protect oneself while exploring, highlighted the importance of self-care after returning by embracing the lower astral realm as a source of growth and exploration, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and experiences. Remember, the lower astral realm is not a place of danger or negativity, but rather a space for personal growth and development and discovery. By approaching it with an open mind and heart, we can 
unlock its potential and uncover hidden truths about ourselves and the world around us. Um, again, I just want to take a second here and say thank you to each and every one of you for being here and for taking part in the class. The lower astral realm, because of the misinformation and the... I don't like to use the word, but the ignorance about the lower astral realm, it's a difficult one. I did expect the class numbers to be lower than it has been in the previous weeks, and I was right, it was. But this lower astral realm and the work that you've done on uh, the work that you've done on the writing out intentions, um, having a specific goal in purpose in doing work and writing that out again, it's all about intention. It's just setting your intention. You're telling yourself you are grounded, you are centered, you are protected, you are safe. And because you're putting that on your right hand side, that is what you are projecting out. What you had in your left hand in that paper, that's what you were looking to receive. That's the information you were looking to find. That's that was the thing that was important to you on this on this trip. So it doesn't have to be dark and nasty and and scary. It can be uncomfortable because sometimes when we ask a certain question, it brings up a difficult situation. But you guys tonight took the time to be with me to allow me to share my knowledge and I just want to say a huge huge thank you for you um, and any questions comments, concerns anything like that let's go into that now um, on this last section so we're going to stop um, going to stop the share Um, and we'll get to questions. So if you have questions, concerns, anything that didn't feel right, that's okay, Michelle. Um, I'm going to get the recording up as soon as I can. Um, But yeah, the recording will be up as soon as we can, and I will get all of the slides up um, later on today, um, or tomorrow, should I say. Um, they will be up some point at some point tomorrow. They will they will be up for you. Um, Where do we find the replays? Um, the replay will be posted in the astral class. Because we're doing this just for um, members uh, and students of the Academy, at the moment it is not being released out on YouTube. So I will be posting links to the first three classes that we've done, along with the videos of those. I'll post them again. That will be tomorrow. Um, and I'll post them all in the room. And I'll also include today's slides. And as soon as I get the video up, I will be putting those up. I'm also going to make a post in the community group um, that will have all of the links to the classroom, uh, to the recordings and to the slides for each class. So I have the slides and class for class one, slide and class recording for class two, Slides in class for class three. Um, and then as soon as I get the uh, recording sorted for tonight, we'll have that put in there as well. So they will be available on both the community page and also on the um, Astral Group chat.
I want to thank you, Paul, for so much for having these classes. It's been very interesting. And I also uh, I want to thank you for respecting my wishes for tonight. Oh, I, I... <coughs> absolutely. And, and the thing about it is, is even if you don't take part in the meditation and, and the travel, I, I try to make it so there is something that you can still take out of the class. Um, in this case, it was intention setting. It was projection, and it was how to project and how to receive. Which makes me think about this right-hand pillar. Keep on bringing me back to that right-hand pillar that Honey was talking about. Right is the projection side. However, it was on the right-hand side... So was that something you were trying to receive because you were projecting it if you put yourself in the place of that pillar that pillar would be on the left which means receiving hmm interesting sorry <laughs> i thought everyone all right let's have a look what everybody's saying here uh the clock reminded me of the grandpa old grandfather clock I was standing with her until I went to leave. She tapped me on the shoulder to give me the letter. Thank you for being here, Tiggy. And I truly do appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, okay. I wasn't able to read it and I'm not scared. I was scared of this one. I was Okay, so still something for you to take away from that, Ashley. Um, if you remember how um, when we were going through the slides, we were talking about um, self-reflection and learning about things from the past, maybe triggers from the past, um, and seeing them. It seems like this is one of the things um, that's happened. Um, and I don't want you to ever apologize for putting things into words it, it, it's just the fact that you're sharing is absolutely amazing and once again if this is something you want to talk to me privately about i'm quite happy to do that we can talk about it one-on-one -on -one or we can talk about it in the group i know tonight was a lot to process there was a lot going on there was a lot of wibbly wobbly Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tock tick, tock tick, tock tick. A lot of different processes you were you were all going through. So, anybody got any questions? Any questions about tonight? I just want to mention that uh, when you're talking about the <laughs> receiving, um in the left and then projecting to the right hand side of your your arm i've that's how i've got my mala beads i've got the beads on my left for receiving and then i have the beads on my right wrist for uh, projecting out yep if you if you depending on which school of thought you follow if you look at the if you look at the magnetic flow of the body, it goes in that motion of out from the right-hand side, in from the left-hand side. Some energy workers work that way, others don't. Um, 
I was always taught that the right hand side is the projection side and the left hand side was the receiving side. I've also heard some people say um, you project with your dominant hand. Now, some people are left handed, which means their left hand would be their dominant hand and that would be the hand they project with. I teach with what I know on my knowledge base and I would because I was always taught project to the right, receive from the left. That's why, for instance, if I'm doing some sort of work and I, I need to project a certain energy out. If I'm working with something like a talisman, I will have that on the right hand, or if I'm using a talisman to receive something, or when I hold my wand, I, I would hold my wand with, with my right hand. Um, so that that's, that's why I say right versus left. But there are different schools of thought. Some people go by whichever hand you're dominant is the one you project. I can only teach you guys from my experience, but I'd like to share the fact that there are some people, and you'll read the stuff online that says you go with the dominant hand as your projection hand. But if you see that, don't come at me and go, but you told me it was the right hand side, and I'm a left-handed person, and this person said... Different strokes for different folks. Whatever works for you, go for it. Actually, that's something we can definitely work on. I do flip-flop normally, but I get it because you put protections in place of release for me. Yep. So as, as, as that's what I was talking about, um, Andrea, with uh, what Kelsey's saying, that sometimes she does things the other way around. And again, it's entirely what feels comfortable for you. Some people would say if you're doing baneful work, you project with your left hand side because baneful work is supposedly the left hand path. If you follow that viewpoint, it's not a viewpoint I personally follow. Um, to me, magic is magic. There is good, there is bad. It, it's all about that equilibrium, that balance. Um, lightness, darkness, yin, yang, however you want to reference it. To me personally, um, I, I don't follow a left-handed, right-handed, baneful versus non-baneful, light work versus dark work. To, to me, magic is magic. Magic is just magic, plain and simple. But that's how I view my practice, and that's how my practice is for me. Not knocking anybody who has a different view on that, absolutely not. But uh, anybody else have any questions? All right, guys. Well, if nobody else has got any questions, uh, it's five after 11 here. So I'm going to let you all go for the evening. Once again, thank you so much for sharing your time. Um, for spending the time to be with me um, and for trusting me uh, to take you on the journey and for hopefully learning something. Um, 
And if you want to discuss it further, obviously we have the uh, the astral chat. If you have something that's a little bit more personal that you'd like to discuss with me, just drop me a note in the astral chat and we'll take it from there. Um, but thanks very much for being here, guys. I hope you had a great time. Um, and we'll see you all on the next class. Have a great night, everyone. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight was great. Thank you.